I was I was surprised to see it, but we are in uncharted waters, aren't we, with with COVID? And um, I, I I do feel for the players. I mean, when we went to India, we'd go for five months, and we'd be in the hotel all the time. Very difficult to to go out. Um, that the, there weren't the restaurants that there are now. Um, so we'd eat in the hotel. Uh, the only time you could go out was when we weren't playing test matches, and you would get invited out by Indian families, and that was lovely. We used to go out two or three of us at a time and uh, um, we had some some lovely food with those families and learn you know, from them about their their particular culture in that area of India um, but we we played charades and things like that and you can do that so many times and it was it was difficult and so I do feel for the players uh, about the rotational but I I think when you're playing well that you want to keep going if you can um, you know, there are, you, you have your good times and your bad times, but uh, certainly when you're playing well, you get into a rhythm and it's good, it's confidence is there and everything. So I, I, I was a little bit surprised, but, you know, I, I, I see in the papers and Michael Atherton took up the point, didn't he, where he said, well, we're playing now for, 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 for short form cricket. We're keeping the players for short form cricket. However, I think we're very early on in this programme, and it certainly hasn't worked in India, as has shown, but I think it could do by the end of the Aussie series, where we have uh, fre good fresh players who play well, and if we beat Australia in Australia, then I think they can turn around and say, we got it right. And I think it's such a big year for Test Match Cricket for all these players, and I do think that it, when, when you can do a rotational thing, then uh, where, where it's possible. And I think because of COVID, you know, that uh, players have been, uh, have, have, um, you know, been in their hotels for a long periods of time and not being able to, to uh, go out or talk to anybody else. So I think that uh, we are in, in exceptional times, uh, but I hope yeah. that by the end of the Aussie series, we beat Australia and they can say that, uh, that, that they did get it right with so much cricket to play, but it looks as though that there are other reasons as well which is um, the T20 World Cup. Uh, I, I see that um, uh, the chief executive of the uh, Tom Harrison has said that uh, um, test match cricket is for white uh, middle-aged people and for other, other forms of cricket, it's just an open door and we can make so much more money through short form cricket. And hence the, the 100, I, I should think, the 100 competition, which obviously was canceled this year, coming next year. Um, looking forward to that to see, see how that played, but I do think that short form cricket is starting to take over and be, and it looks as though it's it it it's going to be the be all and end all. Does does it does it? I think it it could be Test match cricket is looking as though it might take a back seat along along the lines. I, I don't think uh, for a year or two, but uh, um, that's what where they're all pushing. I think. Okay. But going back to the 50s, when you started, so much has changed and what you're talking about now with T20 and uh, the 100, 100 game, so much has changed. But when you started, it was a very hierarchical game and you walked into a, a Warwickshire club that had amateurs and professionals, um, first 11 and second 11 cap players, and you, as a 15-year-old, had to experience being at the bottom of the pile. Tell us about those days, Dennis, and, and, and what you felt about that and what it was like growing up in that, in that environment as a young player. Yeah, um, it was a funny situation, really, in as much that um, I, I think uh, gentlemen and players, after I started, went on for a couple of years. I think it finished about 19, 1960, but uh, we'd have to change when we were on, we, they called it the nursery staff that, that we were on at our age. And there were a few other players with me, uh, some a little bit older, and we'd have to change uh, in the indoor, the old indoor cricket school um, because there wasn't room in, in the pavilion because the professionals would have one dressing room and the amateurs being in smaller number would have the smaller dressing room. So we would uh, start, and, and, and I tell you what, it was jolly cold in that in, indoor cricket, cricket centre, even in the summer months, it didn't get much sun in there. Um, but after a couple of years of uh, amateurs and professionals uh, playing in that situation, you had different gates. So the amateurs would walk out of one gate, the professionals would walk out of the other. Um, MJK was, was an amateur and uh, Alfie would go, there weren't many amateurs in that, uh, in that Warwickshire side. Oh, I, I think uh, um, um, Ranjit Singh, 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 was it? Was it Ranjit Singh? 
Yeah, I see. Well, what a cricketer he was. Um, I mean, I think he was an amateur. He he came out the other gate. But after a couple of years, everybody became uh, professionals and uh, we came in from the cold, from the indoor cricket centre, and we came into the small dressing room that the amateurs had been uh, had been using. So um, I didn't see too much of it, but uh, enough, and I'm glad it's all changed. Uh, we, all became, we all became professionals. But trying to break into a Warwickshire side was not easy, as, as I said earlier, that uh, we had such a good a good batting line up in those days. 